What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic and for almost four years you guys have been asking me to do a video about projector screens and I'm sorry it took this long to do this but today we're finally going to talk about screens. So in this video today, I want to talk about the benefits of a screen, screen sizes, the different types of screens, different textures and situations where you would use them. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you might have noticed that I'm a fan of elite screens. So for the past few years, I've been using their 135 inch centigrade borderless screen, which I loved and used for most of my projector reviews. And Elite Screens was nice enough to sponsor today's video, so I want to thank them for providing the screens that you'll be seeing in the video today. So one of the most common questions I see from people who are new to projectors is do you even need a screen? Well, in some of my earlier videos a few years ago, I mentioned that you can use a projector on the wall without a screen. And this is still technically true as long as you have a perfectly flat wall that's free of imperfections, but an actual screen will be superior to a wall in pretty much every situation. In other words, if you're happy with how a projector looks on a bare wall, you'll absolutely love how it looks on a screen. Now, one thing that I always mention to anyone who is setting up a projector for the first time is that before you buy a screen, it's best to plug in your projector and temporarily project onto a wall first because I can almost guarantee you're gonna end up wanting a different size than you thought. And if you haven't picked out a projector yet, you need to figure that out first because different projectors work better with certain screens, which I'll talk about a little later in the video. So this brings us to the different types of screens. So the two most common screen types are fixed frame screens and retractable screens. So fixed frame screens are like big picture frames that you hang on your wall and retractable screens are the type that we've all seen in classrooms and office buildings and they can either be pulled down manually or motorized. As far as which one of these is better depends on your situation. Fixed frame screens usually work better in a dedicated home theater and retractable screens work great in a multi-purpose room where you might not have the wall space for a large screen. The best part about fixed frame screens is that they have a completely flat surface since the screen material is stretched tightly around the frame. And most fixed frame screens have a black felt border around them that absorbs light from the projector, which makes it much easier to get the projector perfectly aimed on the screen. And some fixed frame screens are borderless, which means they either have no black border or a very thin border. Retractable screens, on the other hand, can either be tensioned or non-tensioned. The tensioned retractable screens are often referred to as tab tensioned, since they usually have some sort of cable and tab system that adds tension to the screen to prevent wrinkles for a flatter surface. And non-tensioned screens usually rely on the rigidity of the screen material itself, as well as a weighted bar to create a flat surface. So projector screens can either be front projection or rear projection. So with rear projection, the projector is positioned behind the screen facing towards the audience and front projection screens have the projector positioned towards the screen from the front. And even though rear projection screens require you to have a lot of space for you to be able to position the projector behind the screen, it is beneficial if you're using the projector somewhere with a lot of ambient light, such as outdoors or a TV studio. So if you're considering projecting outdoors, the very first thing you need to consider is putting your screen somewhere away from as much sunlight as possible, such as under a covering. And if you don't have a covering, then Elite Screens does have an awning system that you can use to block out some sunlight. And their Yardmaster series even has some fast folding frames, pop-up screens, electric motorized screens, and all sorts of different cool outdoor options. All right, so now that we got screen types out of the way, let's talk about size. Now, in order to figure out what size you want, you have to first choose an aspect ratio, then measure your wall to make sure it can fit. So the two popular aspect ratios are 16 by nine, also known as HDTV format, and 235 by one, which is also known as CinemaScope. So generally 16 by nine is best if you plan to watch a lot of TV shows and sports, since most TV content is 16 by nine. And CinemaScope is best if you plan to watch a lot of movies, since most movies are shot in widescreen formats, which fit better on a CinemaScope screen. So once you know what aspect ratio you wanna go with, the next thing to consider, which is probably one of the most important, is throw distance. So throw refers to the distance that your projector needs to be from the screen in order to project a certain size image. All right, so for example, let's say you wanted to go with a 120 inch screen and you wanted to pair that up with the Epson 5050 UB. Well, you need to consider that the Epson needs to be a minimum of about 12 feet away from the screen to project that size image. So if your room is only 10 or 11 feet deep, this is obviously not gonna work. So you'd either have to go with a smaller screen or grab a short throw projector. 
And one of the most important things when it comes to choosing a projector screen size is the brightness of your projector. And that's because the bigger the screen, the dimmer the image will be. So for example, if you took a 1500 lumen projector and projected it onto a 90 inch screen, you would get a pretty bright image. But if you took that same projector and projected onto a 150 inch screen, the image will be much dimmer. So one cool tool for people who are new to projectors or projector screens is the projection calculator tool on projectorcentral.com. So you just put in the model of the projector you plan to use, and then you can see the exact calculations of the screen as well as the throw distance from the screen for that projector. And one of the most helpful things about this calculator is the estimated image brightness. So projector brightness is measured in what's known as ANSI lumens. So the higher the ANSI lumen number, the brighter the projector is. But considering that screen brightness changes according to how big the image is, screen brightness is measured in foot lamperts or FL for short. Now, I personally prefer a really bright screen. So for a dedicated home theater, I would recommend at least 25 foot Lamberts. And for a multi-purpose room that has a lot of ambient light, I would recommend a minimum of 35 foot Lamberts. All right, so now let's talk about viewing distance. Now, when it comes to viewing distance, I say this is completely subjective. People usually tell you that your seating distance should be around three times the height of your screen, but in my opinion, this won't always fit everyone's personal preference. I sit about nine feet away from a 135 inch screen, which might be too close for some people, but I absolutely love it. So again, this is where temporarily projecting onto a wall comes into play, since you can see if the screen size works for you. So once you have your screen size, you need to determine which projector to go with if you haven't already, since it might have features that work better for certain screen sizes. So for instance, certain projectors have a motorized lens, which works great for CinemaScope screens since you can set lens memory and have the projector automatically zoom in and out depending on what you're watching. Some projectors also have a better vertical offset than others, which can give you more flexibility when it comes to how high or low your screen needs to be from the ceiling. And some high-end projectors as well as some Epson projectors are popular for people with CinemaScope screens or people who need extra installation flexibility thanks to their motorized lenses and big lens shift range. And if you're not familiar with vertical offset or you have more questions about projector installation, then I'll put a card here to my projector installation video which has a little more detail. All right, so we talked about projector screen types and size, but what about the different types of screen material? Well, this is where things get more complicated. So there's a bunch of different types of material and finishes, but the main things to consider are gain, color, and texture. All right, so first let's start with gain. So gain refers to the amount of light that is reflected off the screen and back to the viewer. So the higher the gain, the brighter the image. So a basic matte white or gray screen would have a gain of 1.0, which is considered neutral. A high gain screen might have a gain of 1.3 or higher and it'll be noticeably brighter than a neutral screen. So neutral screens are the most common and they work fine for most situations, but the downside to these is that they don't look that great in rooms that have a lot of ambient light. High gain screens, as I said, do make the image brighter, which can be helpful if you have a projector with a low lumen output, but there are some downsides to this. One common issue is what's known as hot spotting, where part of the screen, usually the center, looks brighter than the rest of the screen. Another side effect of certain high gain screens is that you might have a more narrow viewing angle since the image might not be as bright for viewers who aren't sitting near the middle of the screen. And depending on the type of high gain screen you buy, you might also notice a glittery effect on the screen when viewing it at a certain angle. And on the other hand, you have screens that have a negative gain such as 0.8 or 0.9, which are slightly dimmer than the neutral screen, but usually have some other benefit such as improved contrast or ambient light rejection, which I'll talk about in a second. All right, next let's talk about screen colors. So the two popular screen colors are white and gray. White screens are certainly the most popular since they offer the most brightness and usually represent the most accurate image. However, gray screens are becoming more popular since they can improve contrast and black levels, especially with budget projectors. All right, so which one do you choose? Well, if you're on a budget, then I often recommend a gray screen since most budget projectors benefit from better contrast and black levels. Even though white does a great job of reflecting color, I found that gray screens are still more than bright enough and the slight contrast boost is more important in my opinion. And while we're on the topic of colors, one thing you can do that makes a huge difference in your image quality is to use dark colors on your walls and ceiling. And what this does is prevent the light from your screen from reflecting off your walls and ceiling and back onto the screen, which has a huge negative effect on your contrast and black levels. Now this may not seem like a big deal, but it really does make a big difference. 
So now on to one of the most important aspects of choosing a screen, which is texture. So screen texture really depends on the type of features you need in the screen. If you're using a 4K projector, then you wanna make sure that the screen material is perfectly smooth with very little texture or grit, since imperfections in the material might affect the image depending on how close you're sitting to the screen. And if you plan on putting speakers behind your screen, then you want an acoustically transparent screen that allows sound to come through the material. This is what's used in movie theaters, which is why you don't see speakers in the front. And if you plan on putting the screen in a room with a lot of ambient light, then you might benefit from an ambient light rejecting or ALR screen. So ALR screens work great for rooms that have overhead lights since they can reject light from above while reflecting light from your projector back to the viewer. So here I have with me the Aeon CLR3 ALR screen from Elite Screens and directly below it is the LG HU85LA Ultra Short Throw 4K projector. This is a great screen for Ultra Short Throw projectors since it does such a great job of blocking the ambient light from above. Now one thing that's important to note is that not all ALR screens are the same and the type of ALR screen you choose depends on the type of projector you're using. In other words, an ultra short throw projector requires a special type of ALR screen that accepts light from directly below the screen, while an ALR screen for a long throw projector is designed to accept light from a farther distance. Using the wrong ALR screen with the wrong projector will result in a dim and unappealing image since it's designed to accept light from a certain direction, so it's important to buy the right screen. So the screen that I'm using in my home theater right now is the EPV Polar Star Infinity screen, and I'm using an Epson 5050UB with this screen, which is a nice and bright projector. So the Polar Star Infinity is a high contrast ALR screen from Elite's high end line that's made for standard and long throw projectors. Not only does this screen reject up to 85% of ambient light, but it also has a gain of 1.3 and retains great black levels and color saturation even in bright rooms. And some of you might have noticed that I like putting LED strips around my screen, so it's worth noting that this screen does come with an LED backlighting kit, even though I'm using my own custom LEDs right now. So you might have noticed that the LEDs are responding to the video on the screen, which is commonly referred to as an ambilight setup. Now this is a bit of a pain to set up and does require a lot of moving parts and dedication, but I'm working on a tutorial, so I'll put a link in the video description for any of you who are interested in torturing yourself. But that's gonna pretty much do it for this video, guys, and I wanna thank Elite Screens again for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in any of the products I mentioned in today's video, I'll put links in the video description. And let me know if you think I missed anything in this video or if you have any questions and I'll respond to your comments. If you found this video helpful, of course, be sure to make sure you mash that like button for me and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I know this was a long video, but I do appreciate you guys staying to the end and I'll see you guys in the next video. Elite screens, get the big picture.